Guatemala. It's been a mammoth-sized mission just to get here. When we left you previously, our fate was in the hands of a small shop, hoping to uncover the source of a mechanical noise. We're trying not to expect the worst, but we failed to locate the issue. Regardless, we're putting our faith in the Land Cruiser chassis in hopes to uncover what many travelers may overlook in this country. Come with us on this journey through Guatemala. It's a crescendo that starts in a coffee farm and ends at perhaps the most epic off-road route we've ever seen. If driving the longest road in the world wasn't enough, give yourself 100 days to build a 4x4 motorhome capable of such a task. 40,000 miles crossing every type of terrain imaginable through some of the most feared and remote regions on Earth. Just for something to do? No. For something to write books about. Something to relish in the aliveness of living on the edge of the unknown insanity. Something to radically expand our perspective of what the world is actually like and what is possible within one lifetime. I'm Matthew. And I'm Stacy. And this is Toyota World Runners. Guatemala's diverse landscapes give way to their dominant agricultural farms. These areas make up almost 50% of the country, and most travelers, including us, would miss experiencing these places if it wasn't for people like our friend Juan Carlos. And since you're here as well, you can come with us on this deep dive into the veins of this country. Starting with the beverage that we fill our veins with every morning. We call ourselves coffee snobs very loosely because our knowledge comes only from our taste buds blended with the retail price on the shelf. If you asked us to describe a coffee plant before today, it would be a pretty short sentence. We're gonna get a chance to appreciate not only where the coffee comes from, but the work that's involved in bringing it to our cup. Finding out about his other farms would only expand our curiosity further. Look at the size of that tree. Insane amount of coffee. What a beautiful drive in! Oh my gosh! Eat them? Yeah. yeah. Not eat them, but you can uh, taste them. Oh, it's sweet. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Juan's family and business partners have been growing coffee on this land since 1872. We got to learn about the entire process of what it takes to really bring a coffee plant into the hands of the consumer. All of these plants get hand-picked. It's amazing to see not only the process that's involved, but the people who are behind it. Oh, so wow. it's like saying like 14, like 16,000 plants in this area. Well, this is just like the first year they're gonna give something and then next year it's gonna be a lot more. Cool. Oh. So cool. Yum. I like fried plantain. This farm is also diversified with different crops. At our next stop, we'll get to see really how far this diversification goes. So these are all the cardamom seeds. Mm -hmm. Come and pick them. Now that we're all familiar with what goes in our cup every morning, it was time for an adventure that would take us into knowing what's under our truck as we drive every day. As far as unexpected encounters, this list is expanding. I 
feel like I'm on a safari following a defender. We just need the rivals and the lions. <laughs> This is awesome. This is the rubber and the cattle on the on one side. These are the rubber trees on the left? Yes, that's it. Yeah, we'll walk around it and I'll show you before lunch or after lunch. So that's, that's a cacao fruit. Yeah. Wow. Then this is the... Oh, that's so cool. Taste it. Mmm. That's so good. Cool. Mm -hmm. Chew on that. Mm -hmm. It'll be like bitter sweet. And that's where chocolate comes. Oh yeah, that, now I'm tasting that one. Huh? Mm. Yeah. That has to keep it this way. Wow. And then you collect this. How long does it take for that to fill up when it's fresh? It doesn't have to fill up. It's just uh, like if it drips for four or five hours, mm -hmm. whatever, it, whatever it drops, that's yep. what we collect. Okay. That's so cool. So how much to make a tire? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what we're wondering. <laughs> yeah, I guess one, so. of your tires? one of our tires are a lot longer. <laughs> Our farm hopping tour always seems to come the food pit stop, and we must admit that these home cooked meals we've experienced in Guatemala won't be soon forgotten. So in one day we've learned where coffee, chocolate, and rubber comes from. What could possibly be next? Make sure we can follow. All right, we have a new guide. And he's in a 85 extended cab. Find out Juan's next planned excursion for us lays in the sauna of the Pacific coast. A sneaky drop of sweat reaches from under our pores. Who knew trauma from humidity would affect us so much? It's a good thing we trust our truck and our tires, because we wouldn't be walking any of these mud pits before we crossed them. We just gotta follow this little Toyota pickup through the palm trees. Approaching the edge of the largest mangrove reserve in Central America. The humidity here is off the charts and makes us feel like we're in some sort of sweating experiment. Preparing for whatever experience lay ahead tomorrow involved not much sleep and praying for rain that never came. Good morning from the edge of the largest mangrove reserve in Central America. Stacy and I have been gifted by Juan, of course, an epic tour that will commence now. And we follow this guy into the bush. Some acts of nature may remind you of a photo you've seen, or a place you've been. Some, however, are so incredibly different from anything you've experienced that you're left speechless hoping someone will explain everything. This mangrove will make you question everything you know about a forest. How our guide knows where to turn and when to turn is still a mystery to us.
and the deafening hum of the bugs only seems to get louder and echoes more. Something interesting we learned about mangroves is that they can store up to 10 times more CO2 than a mature tropical forest. This means that they're a huge help to our atmosphere. What do you think of this place? It feels very wild. <laughs> if you're enjoying this video, hit the like button and subscribe if you aren't already. It's free and it really does help us out. Being welcomed like family when you're so far from home is one of the best experiences to have as a traveler. Our lunch today would be fresh caught shrimp, tomatoes, french fries, and tortillas. So blessed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and don't forget some hot sauce. And maybe a fresh coconut. Delicious. <laughs> I feel so grateful and, well, privileged to know Juan and have this experience that a lot of people wouldn't. But uh, I'll let you know if we can send you the deets on this location. Back through the mud to escape the brutal humidity, I think the Chinook gained a couple extra few cylinders as we crushed out a two hour drive back into the mountains. Camping with a cool breeze between volcanoes on grassy hills seems like a pretty rad way to finish out the day, I'd say might even get to put on a sweater. How's that for a nice classic looking meal? <laughs> yeah, wow. Chicken, broccoli, Idaho and potatoes. <laughs> View changed a bit. Forecast today, minimal visibility, cloud. Life can get hectic sometimes, especially when you're living on the road in your 4x4 truck. So when you find places with this much peace and quiet, you stay an extra night. rejuvenated, our motivation was about to take us up one of these surrounding volcanoes. Apparently, there's something in the top of it that we really should see. Whether we'll be able to actually see it or not, 
is going to be up to the weather. Sunday stays there. We go into the cloud. I didn't expect that we were going to be walking up a road. No. No. <laughs> Bad. It would be rad to have the Chinook up here, but our legs needed it. We might luck out and actually get a view and be above the clouds. Yeah, the clouds are moving really quick. Formed in the crater of the Chickabal volcano, this lake is sacred to the Mayan people. And while we'd love to swim in it, it's awesome to see places like this protected. <laughs> Easy, just walked up there. All right, four tuner. Yeah, the Toyota four tuner. <laughs> Interested. Our next overland vehicle. Mm -hmm. I like the sound of that diesel. In most of our travel plans, we seek out places that are not popular for tourism. There are some locations, however, like a good cliche, that are popular for good reason. And this next spot is absolutely one of them. Surrounded by massive, active volcanoes, this is Lake Atitlan. It is often referred to in blogs as the most beautiful lake in the world. And here it's referred to as the land of eternal spring for its amazing weather. There are 12 villages that surround the lake and 22 distinct and different languages spoken by the indigenous people. Camping at the viewpoint, we're hoping to set up tonight on the lakefront, which is still at 5,200 feet above sea level. And lucky for us, we even had some friends waiting. We'll meet them for the Missed a little bit of the rainy season. Definitely want more stasis. Okay, well, this is uh, this. Yeah, this beer flight is brought to you by uh, Maple Leaf Drifters. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> shout out to Hugh and Sue. Woo! Oh, I'm so excited. All right, so this is the IPA. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, it kind of tastes more like cardamom and clove. Oh and my like gosh. A little, bit of, a little bit of bubble gum. <laughs> and vanilla? Mm hmm. It's no, really it's good. a really, really good beer. Yeah. This is Dale Pale Ale. I'd say this is a sessionable pale ale, for sure. There you go, folks. You heard it here first. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, it's like beer and like chocolate Coca-Cola had a baby. <laughs> for good reason, am I right? <laughs> Saying goodbye to our family on the road, we had one more night with the volcanoes before we had to deal with the much needed maintenance that's required of our Land Cruiser Chinook so it can continue this expedition to Argentina. of unexpected things if you drive through Central America. And today, that one was a river crossing in between sections of perfectly paved highway. about to do some very cool things. 
first we got to find out. We just drove 20,000 kilometers to Guatemala in the truck we built in 100 days. Well, broke. Judging by the chosen vehicles at this place, I think we've come to the right one. Step one is to determine the whereabouts of a leak in the front of our axle. This is full of uh, diff oil, which means that the, the seal is broken, so the oil from the diff is coming out into the hub, which means that it's probably coming out into the bearings as well. Thankfully, our wheel bearings are still in good shape, but we're definitely going to need a new inner axle seal. If you want a more behind the scenes look at the mechanics that we have to do and the details of the parts that we had to replace here, you can join us on Patreon. We post updates and really get into the inner workings of what it's like living on the road. Yeah, or like bench like or something. It's really, really weird. Grand hammer wind. This is a broken bushing. You can see. See how off-center it is? This is supposed to be in the middle. This one's not broken, but we figure it's probably not long behind this one, so we're replacing both. Well, we could put it there. Hey. We also diagnosed the metallic pinging from our last episode to be the rear U-joint. Overall, after 20,000 kilometers of not easy driving, the truck is looking really good. This is an old chassis and an even older motorhome on top of it. An axle seal, a suspension bushing, a U-joint, new diff fluid, thorough bolt check, a fuel gauge, and we're looking really good. Got our new radius arm bushings in. And a little more clearance. Something interesting you guys should know is that this place here is soon going to be an overlander oasis. He's got plans to build a big communal space and it's a perfect location to see Antigua, to climb the volcanoes. It's just a great stop if you're coming through Guatemala and you know the guys here are awesome. You'll be in good company. So there'll be more news on that. Stay tuned. We might be helping them put up uh, some social media things. We're not sure yet, but this will soon be a spot on iOverlander that you can come stay at and maybe even work on your Toyota or Jeep as well. Our blessings come in, I don't know, shipping container sizes? Yes, it's, they do. <laughs> it's amazing. Those guys, not only were they just like super experts on Toyotas, but I just couldn't believe how, man. Generosity. Man. I, I keep writing about it. It's, it's kindness found in the most unexpected places. Yeah. The truck feels, even just going slow, it feels like quieter and more smooth already. Right, because we're, we're driving without the sway bar. This is the first time driving without the sway bar. We've got no sway bar, and well, and we've got fresh diff oil. That's probably the correct diff oil, and we got mm -hmm. the new U joints, mm -hmm. and yeah, new suspension bushings. A fuel this gauge is, that is uh, telling us we need gas. Hey, it's it's working though. That's awesome. We got a quarter tank.
I feel like we're in a mini castle. Yeah. Or like the the knight's quarters of the castle. <laughs> or in like the, the little quarter house. Yeah, or just like the princess's room. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. rad. I really feel like, I don't know, it was just like back in time or something. Yeah. Like I've never stayed in a place that had stone. slight stone floor. Yeah, really well insulated. This is Antigua, a beautiful, historic, colonial town that makes us want to enter every door and eat in every restaurant. It's a place that we really wish we had more time, but our plans are extending further into the unknown as we're about to experience one of the most incredible four-wheel drive routes that we've ever seen. You know how I know it's going to be a good day? Uh, when uh, five of the sickest land cruisers in Guatemala are ready to drive up an active volcano. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you heard that right, folks, and it's no word of a lie. If there was an epic send-off for leaving Guatemala, this would be it. Oh, I didn't think our first, our first obstacle would be the, the, traffic. the traffic in Guatemala City. This is crazy. The place that we just got our mechanics done also restored this beautiful FJ45 Land Cruiser. They're also responsible for outfitting this 79 series, fully Australian spec. So if you're in Guatemala, this is definitely a place that you're going to want to check out. We're totally biased. But this is a pretty cool lineup of trucks. So given the chance, which one are you taking home? Let us know in the comments. Canada is not known for its volcanoes, active or otherwise. This part of the world is absolutely known for it. And driving this close with this set of trucks Feels like it should be a Toyota commercial, am I right? Toyota, are you listening? Let's go places. After our recent upgrades and maintenance, the Chinook is feeling right at home.
For over an hour, we navigated our trucks in four low over sharp volcanic rock around the southeastern section of the Pacaya volcano. We are completely at the mercy of Mother Nature right now. It's a feeling of equal empowerment and powerlessness. And in between some of the rocks, we can see remnants of people cooking food during a lava flow. It's pretty crazy to think about this molten rock coming from the center of the earth. What do you take away from traveling? Do you snap a photo, put your phone back in your pocket and forget? What memories sit front row in your mind when you speak of those places? What an incredible feeling to carry with us memories so rich, we simply couldn't free them from our minds if we tried. I think the only words we have left for Guatemala are thank you. Oh my gosh, I can't believe we're leaving. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy, man. It's not goodbye, it's see you later. See you later. <laughs> see you later. It's not goodbye, it's see you later. Thank you for everything. Thank you, man. Bye. All right. Our next stop is the border between Guatemala and El Salvador. And if you thought we had some unexpected encounters here, then El Salvador is gonna surprise all of us. This week on Toyota World Runners. Matthew drives the first FJ45. Troopy! I'm tempted to say this is the coolest truck I've ever driven. <laughs> but the shit looks pretty cool too. Yeah. If you're interested in more details about staying at any of Juan's farms, including the mangroves, about the mechanic shop that we went to and the future overland oasis, or the castle cottage that we stayed at, please check the description of this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. 11.36 at the El Salvador-Guatemala border. Let's see how long this one takes.